Hi, Sass, and welcome to Vasily's Garden. Now, folks, you love your herbs. Have you ever tried to grow your own herbs and you haven't been successful? Well, we've come to Pennsylvania Park Produce. I got it right. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> and I got Renette here with me, who's going to take us for a journey from sowing your seeds all the way to harvesting. Now, you've been here for how long? Seven years now. Yep. So you've been growing herbs for the last seven years and, and passing them on to local retailers and, and retailers so on. Retailers and wholesalers. Yep. And wholesalers yep. as well. But first, you've got to take us from the beginning, yep. where the first seed is planted. Exactly right. And how it germinates exactly. and yep. what it takes. Yep. I want to sow my seeds. Okay. Okay, basil seeds. Yep. All right, now what have you got in your tray here? It's actually called Grodan, which is made up of rock wool. Rock wool. So it's in separate little blocks. Yep, like that there. Yep. And you can separate these once you the sure plants can. grow. sure can, that's exactly right. Okay, so what's first stage? Okay, You've so set this up stage, here. First stage, yes, so I've got this tray and then I'm just going to soak it. Soak it. You've got a tub over there. So, yep, so dunk it. For a few seconds like that? About that long, yep, yep. that's fine. You might want to just watch your feet, it's going to get wet. It's okay. So, that's hydrated all the way through now. Yep. Can I feel exactly the weight right. of that? Whoa. It's seriously heavy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a lot of water. It's about 20 kilos there. <laughs> all right. And so my seeds, I'm just, this sort of gives me a little bit of uniformity. Normally we would say to everybody, once you've sown your seeds, to press them down into the soil a little bit. But because you've got the rock wool, you can't actually do it. Yeah, that's correct. So what do you do? So we put vermiculite over the top, which okay. I'll show you. I'll do that now. It's over here. Yeah, it's just yeah. a growing medium. Growing medium? Yep. It's quite light. Sprinkle yep. some. Look at that. It's almost like polystyrene, isn't it? Crumbled. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So how much do you put on top of this? Generally two of these cups. So but that'd be at least about three or four mil in depth. Yeah. 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 But and it just protects the seeds from yeah, drying out. From and the cold and yep. drying out, yeah. So after I do this process, I generally water the whole thing just lightly with a hose. Okay, over the top. To, yeah, to keep yeah. that moist and then it keeps the seeds from underneath and on top okay. all nice and moist. Okay. Yes. My basil goes from here now yep. into the propagation shed which has a heat, a heat mat. mat. And, mat. Yeah, and so you actually there. heat the, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the medium underneath there. Yes. So what temperature would that be at? It's at 28. 28 degrees? Yes, 28 degrees. Just for the basil, yeah. 28 degrees heating in the soil. So if we were sowing our seeds now, we're in springtime now and it's warmed up, but still not warm enough no. if you're in Victoria that's to right. try and sow your seeds that's right. to germinate. Yep. 28 degrees, well, that's a pretty hot day. So we take this across there? Yeah, into that's here. Good. So we come in here? Yep, into here. And just where, just over here? Just here and make yep. sure that it's so sitting on there because that actually... This is the heat bed? Yeah. That is warm. So how long does it take before it germinates? These ones have been here for a week and a half. Okay, this is it. This is a week yeah. and a half later. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you're at home and you want to grow your seedlings and you're not germinating them, you obviously need a heat mat or a heat bed like this one here. And how often would you water these? If they've been here longer than two weeks, you need to rehydrate them, so back into the tub. Okay, so yep. take the whole thing into yep. the tub. Yep. That's the best way to do it? Best way. So yeah. two weeks, this will hold its moisture for two yes. weeks? That's impressive. Yeah. These ones have been here for about three and a half weeks, two and a half, three weeks. Two and a half to three weeks. Yeah. How long before you separate these? Um, I can do that now. If I have room in my shed to do it, I yeah. will do it now. We can do this one? We can do this one, yeah. All right, we'll take this to the next hot house. Yeah, sure. All right. So this is two and a half weeks ready for separating. If you like Vasily's Garden, then you'll love the spring edition of Vasily's Garden to Kitchen magazine. Available at all good news agencies. Subscribe now at vasilysgarden.com. Many people over the age of 50 are developing dry eye. What we need to be looking at is some pretty basic folk medicine revival things to be able to assist people with their eyes. And, and what we've got here in front of us is a standard one that many of you would know about, which is the healing benefits of cucumber. But we need to build some good oils into the body and also hydrate the body because in clinical practice what I find day in day out with boring monotony I must say is that people are generally dehydrated and when we know that we'll sort of pick up the skin and it stays up it should be nice and plump so 
people are well hydrated, their cells are hydrated, their body can function well if they're hydrated. But if they're not, the body starts to dry out. And of course, the eyes are no different. But we also need to mix some oils with our water and the use of cucumber. So let's have a little bit of a rundown there. First of all, some extra virgin olive oil is a really nice way of getting a good oil into the body. The other one that we need to be bringing in is a really top quality coconut oil. And you'll notice that this coconut oil is solid because it's a little cooler, but as the temperature in the room would go up, it would start to liquefy. So you would have a tablespoon of extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil. Now make sure that on the label it says both of those. About a tablespoon is a good introduction. And we've actually got some fish oil in liquid form. So these three oils, extra virgin olive oil and extra virgin cold pressed coconut oil and our fish oil, top quality. Now, when we are actually going to be using cucumber, you need to almost shave it very thinly. The reason for that is that the astringent healing qualities of the cucumber, when it's as fine as this, will actually start to draw that fluid out from around the eyes and be soothing and settling. So you just get a bowl of nicely, finely chopped cucumber and then just place it across the eyes and just lie there and pack the cucumber around the eyes. Now, the thing is, you need to leave it on there for about 30 minutes. Two to three minutes won't cut it. And when you get up, then wash your face and around the eyes with nice, cool, not hot, cool water. We have the astringency tightening and toning the skin around the eyes, number one. We have the oils coming into our body, those lovely healthy oils that are healing and therapeutic. But again, hydrate those cells with common garden variety water. So folks, until next time, find happiness in every moment and enjoy the wonders of folk medicine. This is where we're going. This is it, yep. Wow, look at all this. This is all basil, sweet basil. Surely is. Oh, tell me about this place, huh? Oh, it's hot in here. It's really warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hot. It gets really, really warm on 30 degree days. Oh, um, how long do you spend in here? How, how much time can you spend in here at a time? As little as possible, possible when it's this hot, yes. Do you have to come in here regularly? Yes, yeah, because a lot it needs um, the plants need rotating. What do you mean? Because the basil from here yeah. tends to go a bit yellow in these growth mediums. Okay. So it gets changed to over into the channels. Channels. Oh, so you, yeah. oh these are different styles yeah. of watering. Yeah. So these are like a tub that. Okay. It so they suspend has... in, in water continuously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it just has a small, like a little trickle like that. Yep. So uh, is this water circulating? Yes. But very slowly. It goes, yep. It goes out there. Yep. 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 And these. Are watered you... the whole time. The channels. Yeah. So it's just like guttering on your roof. Okay. And the water's running through yeah, continuously. Yeah. Through all the time. Yeah. All the time. So yeah. it's not a flood and drain where it dries out for a period. That's right. Obviously, you must have tanks. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's how yeah. you it's irrigate. There's a silver it? tank out there, and there's two tanks down and the you're back. You're circulating the water. Yes. The pump's so. running all the time, circulating the water. All right. Now, how long before you change it from this to that? Um, these ones I can probably sell like this. Yep. Yep. And how old's this now? Um, about seven weeks. Seven weeks, so yeah. almost two months. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. So this is the growing medium that you use right. initially. Yes. Yep. There's the cube underneath there, right? And the plant's grown all its extra roots as it's matured over the cube. And you simply just put it in one of these little yep. pots yep. and just drop it in here. That's right. No mess, no fuss. Exactly right, no dirt, no nothing under your fingernails. And it's all clean. Yeah. Now, the only thing you probably have to worry about is insect and disease. Yes, yes. So does right. that occur in here? Yeah, you yeah. get waterborne disease every now yep. and then, and insects, um, aphids usually, and yep. like little mites. Yep. And if you have a look closely there... Yep. You can see... You can see where they've actually eaten... Into the leaf. Yeah. So that's been attacked because it's deformed slightly That's right, there. yeah. So, so see, that's... Yeah. What would that be, an aphid or mite? Probably a mite. That's a mite, yeah. yeah. So, and if it gets too excessive, what do you do about that? Throw them away. Throw them away. No Throw insects, them away insecticide sprays. Those great. little, um, not in the sheds, no, no, not the shed. No. no. Just keep them nice and clean. Yep. Can we do some divisions now? Yes. All right, what are we doing? This so is a tray just, here. That's the tray there, yep. So we'll just put the pot skin in the water. Okay. 
just like that. All right. And then... You pop them up from underneath? Yeah. I'll give you a hand doing that. Well, they just pull apart that easily. Yeah, like that. Wow. Yep. That's easier than seedlings. Yeah. Done. You're Done. kidding me. In there. This like is that. it. That's it. Yep. That is it. Oh. No wonder you left your office job. <laughs> <laughs> this is easier. When you're in the channels, you have yeah. to clean them, so you have to take the lids off, yep. clean the whole lot, and the lids back on. The best way to look after your plants is with Vasili's Easy Hand Spray. Order your sprayer now, available only at vasilisgarden.com. There is no better way than to start your day feeling fresh and revitalised with a natural detox juice. In this juice, I'm adding one green apple. Apples contain many beneficial nutrients and health promoting properties. They also make you feel full and keep you regular. I've also got two celery stems. Now, did you know that one cup of chopped celery contains only 16 calories? It is packed with antioxidants. It supports the immune system and is a great anti-inflammatory. One cup of chopped watermelon. This amazing fruit can help rehydrate you as it's 92% water. One cup of watermelon contains only 43 calories. It has zero fat and is cholesterol free. Watermelon contains the highest amount of the phytochemical known as lycopene than any other fruit or vegetable. Lycopene has anti-cancer properties which work to protect cells from free radicals that can lead to certain cancers. And the rest of the ingredients are three k leaves and one lime. To get the most out of your fruit and veggies, use a Kuvings Whole Slow Cold Press Juicer. It squeezes and extracts the juice of fruits and vegetables without producing much heat, maintaining all nutrients from your fruits and veggies to help keep you going and feeling great. This tastes so good and it's so refreshing and it's all prepared by my Cubings Whole Slow Juicer. For more great recipes just like this, visit our Facebook page or our website. Enjoy. See you next time. These are channels basically These like your guttering. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So the plant, it's just the same. Right. No pot. After seven weeks, these are pretty much ready to go out yep. now, aren't they? they are. So how do you transport these? Just in my bags here. Okay. It's actually got our logo yep. and a pesto recipe. Oh, you get a recipe with yeah. it? Do I just pull that off like it's that? It's actually or easier this way. All right. You just go like that. Just drop it in. Yep. And just rip the bag off. Yeah, all done. Voila, finished product. Would you add any water to this or not? No. No? Doesn't need? But when you take it home, if you yep. sit it in water. Yep, yeah. it'll last you yeah. a couple of weeks. Yep. About Easily. a week. About a week, a week? In good condition, yeah. Basically your basil ready to be used straight in the kitchen yeah. with the recipe of the basil pesto underneath yeah. there. So all year round you basically are supplying um, herbs. Yes. And, and they change according to the season. Yes. So at the moment we've got sweet basil, some chives, lettuce, mint, things like that. Yep, parsley, yeah. coriander. Okay, so they, they must be in a, in a cooler environment than they this. They are, yeah. Yeah, can we yeah. go there now? Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about planting some drought tolerant plants? How about some South African natives like proteas, leucodendrons and leucospermums? These plants are fantastic and not only are they drought tolerant once they're established, they attract all the nectar feeding birds into the garden. And even if you don't have enough room in the garden, you can grow these beauties in large pots. And when planting these into pots, you must use a native potting mix, something that is low in phosphorus. And one of the best ones to grow in a pot is a little leucodendron called Harvest. This little beauty only gets to roughly 75 centimetres by about 75. It's a very small, very compact, has a long lasting cup flower. And also with these, after flowering, always remove the old flower heads. So that keeps the plant nice and bushy. So next year when it comes to flowering, you'll get more flowers. And another beautiful leucodendron is this one called Cream Delight. And Cream Delight has a bit of pink and white coming through in the flower. And with leucodendrons, see these coloured petals here, that is not the actual flower. The actual flower is actually in the middle with these tiny little yellow dots. That's the actual flower of the leucodendron. Since this one gets to a roughly about two metres in height, this is more suited for out in the garden. So when you do plant these out in the garden, make sure you do choose a site that is well drained and sunny, which is very essential for all your South African plants. And another marvellous plant for the garden is the protea. And this one here is an absolute beauty. This one's called Australis ruby and has this beautiful red flower 
with a bit of black and white fuzz around the top there. And again, all proteas make excellent cut flowers. They also love excellent drainage, and they also need an acidic soil in the garden as well. And this one gets to a roughly about a metre and a half in height, so you can plant Australis ruby in a pot. And like with all these, after flowering, always remove the old flowers. Probably a little bit less known than the common protea are leucospermums. Leucospermums, like this one here called Oligro, is absolutely stunning. Look at this beautiful comb flower. It comes up a little bit like a waratah, this is going to open up more and colour up more. So this is going to be like a bright beacon out in the garden. And most of these leucospermums, they'll get from roughly a metre, metre and a half, up to two metres in height. And as you can see, these are covered in buds. So this is going to be an absolute stunner. And give this a couple more years out in the garden and this will just be a mass of colour. And that'll bring all the honey eaters into the garden. So while they're feeding on the nectar, they're going to be chomping on a few insects in your garden as well. Healthy Habits Smoothies Book is now available at all QBD bookstores or online at VasiliesGarden.com. I've got another type of leucospermum here. This is one of the Carnival group, and this one's called Copper. This one grows into more of a compact shrub. It gets for about a metre and a half and about a metre wide. Excellent for a large tub. And as you can see, it has these beautiful coppery, orangey yellow flowers. And these have still got more to open up, so they're going to open up to be a lot larger. It's going to bring out the full colour and as you can see there are buds all over this plant and that's going to look absolutely stunning out in the garden or in a large tub up near the house. And again, all these plants do make excellent cut flowers. They are drought tolerant once they're established and they'll also handle heat, cold, wind as well. And when transplanting your plants out in the garden, not just only just the protea group, always, even if the soil is moist, make sure you re-water the soil while the plant's still in the pot. The root ball must be completely soaked. Tap the plant gently out of the pot, don't disturb the roots. Plant into the ground, and when watering in, water it in with some sea salt. And with sea salt, you can use it on the, the Australian natives and also the African plants. What that does, it helps to settle the plants in, into their new environment. And with sea salt, sea salt is safe for your native plants and also your African plants like your proteas as well. So when transplanting your plants out to the garden, make sure you add some sea salt. Probably only need to do that every few weeks. And what that does, it helps to settle the plants into their new environment, helps to promote nice, healthy, strong root system, and it also helps the plants against heat and drought stress as well. And also, if you add the sea salt on a fairly regular basis with these natives and African plants, probably only every few weeks or so you'll have to do that. But next year when it comes to their flowering time, you'll end up with a lot more flower buds, and beautiful flowers and a stronger colour as well. And next time when you think about planting a few plants out into the garden, how about planting some beautiful South African plants like these beautiful proteas, leucodendrons, leucospermums, because they really do add that beautiful colour to the garden. They mix well into your native environment as well. They attract the nectar feeding birds in and they look absolutely stunning because they're also drought and heat tolerant as well. How many houses have you got? Or glass houses or hot houses have you got? There is seven. There's seven? Only, yeah, there's only the two with the, yep. the full plastic. Yep. Um, and the rest are shade or hail mesh. Okay. And in here yeah. we're looking at lettuce here. Yeah, what have we, we got, got on the side? Baby cos and we've got chives. They're amazing chives. They are. You know, they take it forever to grow outside. How long have these been in here? These ones have probably been here since last spring. But okay. we cut them when oh, we sell been them. Cutting them. Yeah, yeah, so we cut them. So they've been, but the regrowth on them is this it's one here is probably two weeks. Two weeks. So the yeah. regrowth and is so a two week turnaround once yeah. they're established. Yeah. So you've got chives that continue as picking, and that that'd That's be right. the all with all the onions too. Yeah. So you can cut all the leafy plants like that. Yeah. Now these here, you've got one type of lettuce here. What else have you yeah, got? Yeah. So we've got baby cos here, yeah. and over the other side we've got green oak, Beautiful. which is more of a. I guess like a flowery type look. Yeah. The yeah, cos yeah. you'd be using for your Caesar salads and yeah, things like sandwiches that. Sandwiches and things. This is and quite impressive. It's quite an elaborate setup you've got here. Yeah. And I can only imagine the upkeep would be enormous. It's you massive. Yeah. 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 So you're you're working your way through it slowly. Yeah, slowly. Yeah. Yeah. My husband's a really good handyman. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's on here yeah. every day. Well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Early he, on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is your little baby. Yes. Yeah. Love yeah. you. Yes. And I'm slowly learning how to fix things that go wrong. If, <laughs> okay. If a pump breaks down yeah. or if a hose 
yeah. bursts, bursts or, yeah, yeah, I'm learning all that. Now, you are also open to public. That's correct. And you have a shop front? Yes. Yeah, tell it's, us about that. Yeah, it's open on a Sunday from 12 to 5. Yeah. And the address is number 15 Pennsylvania Avenue in Batesford. So they can come down, check out the produce so, yeah. and collect uh, whatever they want fresh for the kitchen. That's exactly right. Wonderful. Now, would anybody ever grab some of these and plant them in the ground? Have you ever had that experience? Because I tell you something about these chives. I'd soon enough, if, I, if you don't, oh, no, I'm not going to pull it out because it's been here for a year. Yeah. Will it come out? <laughs> yeah, it'll come out. Just wiggle, yep, yep. Okay, I can put that in the ground. Yes. And that'll just take off and I can have my own chives. I don't exactly have to wait right. three That's months. Right. Perfect. There you go for an idea, folks. Thank you so much for the opportunity. That's okay. Make it a day, folks. Come down here to Pennsylvania Park Produce. Open on Sundays, 12 to 5. That's right. Yeah. Number 15, Pennsylvania Avenue, yeah. Batesford. Hence Come and check name. out. Check out the produce and take some home to make your own basil pesto. It's the season for it. From Eva Silly, Maresi. Bye.